Well, good morning and happy Friday to you, everybody. This is Stella with Better Life. I am so thankful for the opportunity to come with come come to you today and just really share what's in my heart. Um, I don't know about you, but my heart today is crying out for my country, for my nation, for my state, um, and really this coronavirus that has that has decimated our that is decimating cities and and nations full nations and i was praying this morning just feeling such a sense of righteous indignation and anger because i'm like god you know what what can we do what can we do and um i saw a, uh, a prayer by um uh, Sid Roth was had, had was reading a letter a couple of days ago and saying how he from this particular rabbi the rabbi was saying he was asking that, that praying that the that the president would call a national day of prayer and and then just this morning I was remembering I was well now Lord I just saw a picture a few days ago where they've been praying the White House has been praying those are in positions of authority it's one thing I can I, that I admire about this current administration I, I you can see the prayer you can see that they don't I love that and so this morning as I was stirred in my own heart I asked the Lord what can I do I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ I live and walk by faith what can I do right now and the Lord says he gave me some basic instructions and things that I did so the first thing we're going to do this morning go ahead and if you can get you an, get you an element we're going to take communion because the word of God decrees that as Jesus said he says as often as you do this you do it in remembrance of my body he says take eat in remembrance of what he did at the cross of calvary so for those people who are recovering who are sick not just from coronavirus but from the flu from colds from all sickness and disease jesus took 39 stripes on his back and by the stripes of jesus we were healed at the cross of calvary isaiah 53 decrees he was wounded for my transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with the stripes that Jesus bore, he, we are healed. That's present tense. We were healed when Jesus took those stripes. And so according to the scriptures, the word of God decrees in, in Galatians 3, uh, that, the, that the curse, every curse, sickness and disease is a curse. And every curse, Jesus died for every curse. He died for the coronavirus. He died for cancer. He died for colds. He died for flus. He died for influenza. He died for it all. So in Jesus name, I remember that. So we're going to take our, our communion elements as a reminder of what Jesus did. So I don't know about you. But I don't, I don't, I don't like waiting until, till Sunday, the first Sunday of the month to take communion. My, in our house, we take communion often. We take communion. Um, sometimes we just take communion just because why? Because it is a reminder of what Jesus did. Now I can't speak for people who don't know Christ, but for those people who say you know, name the name of Christ. I'm speaking to you. I am challenging you to bow up in your house, take communion and break the curse. Draw a bloodline over the doorpost of your home and bring the blood of Jesus to bear. Okay, because we are not supposed to be subject to the sickness, the disease that is in the earth. We are not supposed to be victim and fall prey to whatever the devil decides that he wants to do. So today we're going to take this, take this communion elements. It's just a piece of bread and it's just a, a, a little glass of wine or juice or whatever you want to use that works for you. It works for me. So that's the first thing we're going to do. But then the second thing we're going to do today is we're going to pray. We're going to pray because the word says that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, turn for their weak, from their wicked ways, seek my face, then I would heal their land. So we're praying that God, now I'm God's people. I, 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 I repent. I bring my own weaknesses, failures, shortcomings, whatever. I bring it all to the throne of grace and say, God, forgive me. But not only that, I repent for my national leaders. I repent for corporate heads and shareholders who have fallen victim to a spirit of greed, a spirit of avarice, a spirit of pride. Lord, we repent for our pride. So let's just today, we're going to join our faith. So let's, let's start out with the prayer. So 
first of God, first of all, Father, we pray. You said, if my people, so we decree that we belong to you. We are the people of God. And we say, we will humble ourselves today. And we pray. We turn our hearts to you on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our states, on behalf of our cities, on behalf of our schools and our businesses. We turn our heart to you humbly because Lord, we recognize that the one thing that pisses you off more than anything else is a spirit of pride. It was a spirit of pride, Father God, that brought that that that, that kicked Satan out of heaven. It was a spirit of pride that was the leading issue that that brought that brought that brought your your judging up judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Lord, it wasn't there. It wasn't their homosexuality. That wasn't at the top of the list. The number one thing that was on the list that they had in that city manifested. It was a spirit of pride. So God, we humble ourselves. We reject all pride. And we ask you right now to forgive us, to cleanse us, to forgive us of our sins. And Lord, we thank you that as we humble ourselves, we pray, we turn from those things that we know are inconsistent with your will. We turn from a spirit of pride. We turn from a spirit of greed. We turn from a spirit of avarice. We turn from a spirit of anger. We turn from a spirit of wickedness. We turn from a spirit. We repent for a spirit of pornography. We repent for a spirit of murder. We repent for the children, that ba- the babies that we have killed. God, we repent. I stand in the gap for my nation. I repent for my country. I repent for those who don't know and have the wisdom enough to repent for themselves. God, forgive me. I stand in the gap. Forgive me. Forgive us for our sins, oh God. Forgive us, Lord. Because you said if we would turn from our wicked ways, if we would humble ourselves and repent, then you would heal our land. And so, Father, we turn now asking you to heal our land. Lord, I stand in the gap for, first of all, my city, the city of Hattiesburg, the city that we've had one case of coronavirus virus in this city and in this state. And in the name of Jesus right now, I pray for that one person, that one diagnosis, that one positive. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and release the blood over his life, over his body. And I pray right now, God, that you cut that curse curse off in Jesus name. No coronavirus is not coming. The blood of Jesus is against the coronavirus. And in Jesus name, I draw a bloodline over my country, over my city, over my state prince. And in Jesus name, I decree that the coronavirus is stopped. We plead the blood of Jesus over this country. The coronavirus is not greater than the blood of Jesus. It is not greater than the cross. And in Jesus name, he said he gave us instructions. He gave us authority. And if we don't take our authority and we don't follow the instructions, then yes, the enemy can advance in territory. But in today, today I step up and I take my authority. I take my authority and I decree this word of God over my city, over over my state, over my nation. And in Jesus' name, I pray that the coronavirus be stopped in the state of Mississippi. I plead the blood of Jesus over the state of Mississippi. I decree right now that wherever that man went, where that virus went, in Jesus' name, we draw a bloodline. In Jesus' name, we take authority. In Jesus' name, we stand up. We say, in Jesus' name, according to Exodus 15, 26, you are the God that heals us. So we plead the blood of Jesus over that man, that one Mississippi City citizen who contracted this virus, we plead the blood over him. We draw a bloodline and we decree his healing. We decree the eradication of that virus from his body and we boldly say the Lord will raise him up. The word of God says the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. We thank you, Father, hallelujah, that you, when you told the children of Israel, when the death when the death angel went through the nation of Egypt you told them to put the blood at the sign of the doorpost and that where you saw the blood that you would pass over and so Lord we apply the blood over the state of Mississippi we apply the blood why because you said every place on which my foot shall tread you've given it to me so I claim my state I claim my city I claim my territory and in Jesus name I decree where my foot has 
has tread. You've given it to me. And I claim this territory. And I plead the blood of Jesus over my state. I thank you, Father, that you said in Exodus 23, 25, and 6, that you would take sickness away from the midst of us and the number of our days you would fulfill. And so in Jesus' name, we pray for many of those who are stricken with this virus. And in Jesus' name, we pray right now, hallelujah, that you heal them. You take sickness away from the midst of them. You bring them up. You raise them up in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father that you said, hallelujah, in Deuteronomy 28, 61 and Galatians 3, 13, that you have redeemed us from every sickness and every plague. So in Jesus' name, we stand on this word and we decree in Jesus' name that this curse, this curse of this sickness, you said that Jesus himself, according to Galatians 3, 13, became a curse and cursed be the one who hung on the tree. And so in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, hallelujah that that curse is stayed we stand in the gap we plead the blood we hold our confession of faith and we com we trust in you father you have redeemed us from every sickness and every plague we praise you for it father you said that you have healed us and brought up our soul from the grave you have kept us alive and kept us from going down into the pit in Jesus name according to Psalms 30 verses 1 and verse 2 I thank you according to Psalms 29 11. You give strength and you bless us with peace. In Jesus name, we thank you, Father, that this disease is stayed. We call upon the name of the Lord and we praise you, Father, for joy. Hallelujah. For the joy of the Lord is our strength and we decree in Jesus name. We are strong in you and in the power of your might. So we exercise our authority. We take our power. We use our words. We decree your promises and we bring this curse under the blood of Jesus Christ and we decree right now the enemy is defeated in Jesus name. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So we thank you father that we still say that Jesus Christ is Lord over America. You know why we can say that father? Because there was one man you sent to Nineveh. You sent one prophet to Nineveh who preached the word of God and the whole nation was saved because of one man's prayer. One man's sermon. You told Abraham, if you could find just one person in the whole of Sodom and Gomorrah, that you would stay your hand. You would save it for one man's prayer. So God, I am one woman. I'm one person bold enough. I'm going to say, I know that I'm not the only one. And I bless those others who are you are raising up. I bless those others. I join my faith with them in saying, we will stand in the gap for our country. We will hold fast to our faith. We will decree your word. And a According to Psalms 41 verse 2, you will preserve us, preserve us and keep us alive. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for your word in Jeremiah 33 verse 6. You said, behold, I will bring it health and a cure. I will cure you and will reveal unto you the abundance of peace. And so in the name of Jesus, we decree according to your word, Jeremiah 33, 6, you will bring health and a cure. And so in Jesus name, we pray for the, 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 the researchers, the doctors, the physicians, all of those who are in the laboratory right now looking for a solution. We decree the divine intervention of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We pray for supernatural wisdom. We release angels into those laboratories to show them the right combinations, to show them the right strategies, to show them the right techniques, to show them what to do, how to do, when to do. You, Lord, are the God of all solutions and there is nothing hidden that shall not be revealed and there's nothing done in secret that will not be brought into the light. So we thank you, Lord, for bringing the genetic the genetic breakdown of this virus into the light and giving the researchers the, the exact combination, the exact combination of treatments, strategies. You show them what to do by your grace, Father God, because you said, Jeremiah 33, 6, you will bring health and a cure. You will bring health and a cure and you will reveal the abundance of peace and truth. What is truth? Thy word. John 17, 17 says, thy word is truth.
So in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for health and a cure. And we thank you, Lord, that when Jesus did something, when Jesus cured people, he, you see the word quite often where immediately, immediately the results were manifested. Immediately the results came forth. Immediately in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And so, Father, we thank you for immediate results, immediate solutions, immediate strategies. We thank you for immediate answers in the name of Jesus. We thank you that quickly they're going to be testing. Quickly they're going to see a cure. Quickly, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. You said in your word again that you would bind up that which was broken and you will strengthen that which was sick. And Lord, for those, we know that this virus attacks the respiratory system. So according to Ezekiel 37, verse 5, 4, 14, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. So we pray right now over people all over this nation, all of the cases that are, that where people are having difficulty breathing, we release this word. We send angels right now into every house where this this disease has has stricken into the life of every person who has come in contact with this virus and we decree in Jesus name quickly father angels deliver unto them the manifestation of this word in Ezekiel 37 verses 5 and 14 behold I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live in Jesus name I put my spirit in you and you shall live live. We decree that they shall live and not die in Jesus name. I don't care how old they are. All of those in their 80s, their 70s, their 60s, their 90s, their 30s, 40s, 50s, teens, all the way down. We decree in Jesus name they shall live and not die because we release this word. There is no distance or time and so Father we praise you. You said you sent your angels, hallelujah, hallelujah to minister unto the heirs of righteousness and in Jesus name I call forth the angels from heaven. I call the angels into this earth realm right now. And I release an angel into every house stricken with this disease. Every person struggling to breathe. Every person who can't stop coughing. Every person who can't take a deep breath. And we command this word to be manifested in their life. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I shall put my spirit in you and you shall live. We, Ezekiel 37. 514 and we thank you father that you said that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living waters that if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit then your belly out of your belly is a river of living waters and the word of God says that out of your belly that so we get to take that water we get to take that water everywhere and so we decree in Jesus name of Ezekiel 47 9 that wherever the river shall come shall live where the river flow, life goes where the river of living water inside of you, believer, inside of you man of God, inside of you, woman of God, where you go, because the river of life is in you, so where you go, life goes, where you go, healing goes, where you go, and according to your word, Father, they shall be healed and everything shall live where the river goes. And so, Father, we decree that wherever we are, life is. Why? Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. Your born again believers, those people who name the name of Jesus Christ, those people who have been saved by grace, those people who have been washed in the blood of Jesus, those people who call upon you and you answer us, those people who you have named you mocked us hallelujah and called us out of darkness into your light we thank you father that we belong to you where we go the river goes where the river goes healing goes in jesus name we thank you father that it's not just in the old testament that we see but we have one more scripture in malachi 4 verse 2 you said 
I will arise with healing in my wings. And we thank you, Father, that as you arise with healing in your wings, sickness and disease is defeated. Coronavirus is defeated. The blood of Jesus removes the curse of the coronavirus. And we thank you, Father, that we live and we walk in health. We are restored. We are healed. We are delivered. We are set free by the grace and the power of your blood. We thank you, Father, that in Matthew chapter 8, Matthew 8, verse 3, you said, I will. Jesus said he went about healing all of those that were sick and filled with disease. And when he gave it, when it was always his, his will that we should be healed, that we should be whole. Matthew 8, 17 says, I took your infirmities. I took your sicknesses. I took your diseases. I bore your sicknesses. Matthew 8, 17. He says, Jesus is the ultimate physician. He is the healer. He is the doctor. And he is the doctor when they do when the doctors don't know what to do. We thank you that Jesus is in that room. Jesus is in that room bringing healing and a cure. He's in that room bringing deliverance. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that in where, everywhere Jesus went, he was moved with compassion toward the sick and he healed them. And so we thank you, Father, for healing being released all across this nation. We thank you for the angels that are come into the earth going into every household stricken with this virus every bedroom stricken with this virus every hospital room stricken with this virus we decree angels are going taking healing into that room we praise you father that according to the scriptures jesus said that we can bind and loose we bind every spirit every principality every power every ruler of darkness that is endeavoring to set up in high places over the cities over the nations we bring we come against it and we decree you must come down you must come down we bind you in Jesus name you will not establish strongholds of sickness and diseases across this nation no 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 and no in Jesus name there will be no stronghold of coronavirus established in the state of Mississippi there will be no stronghold of coronavirus established in the state of Louisiana there will be no stronghold of coronavirus established in the state of Alabama there will be no stronghold of coronavirus established in the state of Tennessee we plead the blood of Jesus over this territory, over this region, and we decree right now no stronghold of coronavirus. You pop up, you die, and you go away. You pop up, you die, and you go away. We decree the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, is applied against you. And we thank you, Father, that as we decree your word, and stand on your promises and hold fast to our confession of faith without wavering. We know that you are faithful. Hallelujah. To you, your word will not return unto you void. That where the word of God goes up, it, is, it will accomplish that which it is sent to do. This word that we decree this day is sent to bring healing and a cure to our nation, to our state. In Jesus' name. I partner with those who are in the White House praying. I partner with those who are in the Senate praying. I partner with those who are in the Governor's House praying. And we thank you, Father, that we bring healing and a cure. And we praise you, Father. Father, you are the God who heals us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that you are raising up believers and full of faith, full of power, full of authority, who are stepping in to their divine assignment to manifest healing, to manifest cures, to manifest deliverance, to manifest. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. And according to the scriptures, Matthew 15, 26, healing is the children's bread. And we thank you, Lord, that as your children, we access your healing. We step into your healing. We manifest your healing. We receive your healing and we deliver your healing to those who are sick. We deliver your healing to those who are bound. We deliver your healing to those who need to be raised up. In Jesus name, we will not bow into fear for the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so right now we come against the spirit of fear. We take authority over a spirit of fear. In Jesus name, 
and we bind a spirit of fear from over this nation, from over households, from over my state. In Jesus' name, the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but we decree. We thank you, Lord, for the power to overcome, the power to cast down, the power to bind, and the power to loose. In Jesus' name, we step into our power. We take our authority. We decree your word. We stand up in your promises, and we see manifestation. We see the results in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God who always, not sometimes, not part of the time, not every now and then, but who always causes us to triumph by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we honor you. Yes, that's right, Pebble. Pebble, Pebble we praise God. Carletta, we magnify God. James, we glorify God. We thank you, Father. Father. Oh, we hallelujah. We bless you. You said in your word, Matthew 10 verses 1, Luke 9, 1. I give you power and authority. I give you power and authority over all unclean spirits. The coronavirus is an unclean demonic entity and we take authority over this unclean spirit and we bind you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Blessed be God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. You have given us power and authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and disease. So, Father, we thank you that we heal, we heal all manner of sickness and disease. And since there is no distance, no time, I thank you, Lord, that by the Spirit, I step into the room of that person in Mississippi who was diagnosed with the coronavirus, and I see myself laying hands on him. You said the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And so I see myself laying hands on him. I see the virus dying, dying every cell, every little triangulated piece in Jesus' name. You will die in Jesus' name. You will not multiply. You will not make him sick. You will not take his life in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that as he gets tested again, they're going to look at the results and we decree in Jesus' name, there will be no trace of the coronavirus in his body in Jesus' name. Because he is a doctor at the hospital where I live in Jesus' name. And we proclaim his whole body totally restored in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. That everything you do, you do it right and you do it well. Lord Jesus, you do all things well. You thank you, Father, that we believe in you. And because we believe, we see the impossible manifest. We see the impossible take place. We see the impossible happen. We believe to see. We expect to see the impossible manifestation. We expect to see signs, wonders, and miracles. We expect to see people all of a sudden popping up off their bed, total fever broken, coronavirus gone. We told, we expect to see it across this nation from state to state, from city to city, border to border. We anticipate the inevitable supernatural intervention of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords over this nation. For you said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And as long as I live in this nation, I will decree that this is a nation that belongs to God. Hallelujah. I praise you, God, for healing and the cure. We thank you, Lord, for healing and a cure. And Lord, why are you at it? We just decree, why are you at it? Why are you bringing healing and a cure? We're going to be as bold as to say that while they're discovering a cure for the coronavirus, they're going to find cures for other viruses and other sicknesses. And they're going to be, we're going to be eradicating not only this one, but we're going to be a step ahead for anything else the enemy would launch. We're going to decree in Jesus' name that other diseases, they're going to find cures for them in the name of Jesus. And while we're at it 
right, Father God, since we're praying and since we're taking what we decree in Jesus name that what the enemy intended for evil, Lord, you're going to turn it around and work it for our economic good. We praise you, Father, for those those businesses that have that have those companies in this country that lost business because of the business that they were getting in other countries. We thank you, Lord, for that business, their businesses thriving, exploding businesses that were sent overseas. We call them home. They coming back to the United States and there are going to be more jobs in this country for people. We thank you, Lord, that what the enemy intended for evil, we decree blessings are going to come out of it. Why, Father? Because you said, hallelujah. That oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because we win. At the end of it all, we win. Why? Because Jesus has already fought, fought the battle. He's already defeated the coronavirus. He's already brought it down. He took his stripes for it. He went down into the de- into hell. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. And he bought healing and deliverance for us. We win in Jesus' name. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So we testify Jesus Christ is Lord. We testify that all things, Romans 8, 28, thank you, Sharon, all things, hallelujah, that when we don't know how to pray for as we are, the Holy Spirit takes hold together with our spirit. And when we begin to pray, hallelujah, the Lord will turn things around. He will engineer situations and circumstances and bring about blessing out of a curse. Only God can bring a blessing out of a curse. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. According to John 10, 10, we thank you, Father, that Jesus came, that we might have life and we'd have that life abundantly. So for all of those who've been stricken with this, this disease, we thank you. We release the life of life to you now. We release the life of life to you now. For Jesus is the resurrection and the life. John eleven twenty five. 25, he says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 14, 14. And so, Father, we have asked you to bring miracles signs and wonders out of this prayer, out of this moment. And it's not me. It ain't about me, God. It's about you. It's about you being about you using a vessel that's bold enough to be crazy enough to come before, to get on the camera and to decree what you said. God, this is your word. It ain't my word. I'm just the voice. I'm just giving this word voice in the earth. Psalms 103. Hallelujah. He says the angels hearken unto the voice of the Lord's command. And so in Jesus name, I am giving voice to the commandments of God and the angels are listening, taking this word. They're right here, taking each word, taking each declaration, taking each decree, running in the earth to and fro to manifest what the father has already said in Jesus name. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That Jesus makes us whole. Acts 9, 34. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that your power causes diseases to depart. Hallelujah. Acts 19, verse 12. It says, the law of the spirit of life in me has set you free from the law of sin and death, Abby. The law of sin and death. So we decree healing and wholeness and soundness. And we thank you, Father, that the coronavirus is stopped in Jesus' name. We plead the blood over over this nation. We plead the blood over it and we pray in Jesus name that every, in fact, we're going to decree right now. Hallelujah. That every person who's come in, come in, who've come in contact with the coronavirus, we decree right now an encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We thank you, Lord, that they come into contact with the spirit of the living God. We thank you, Father, that Jesus himself reveals himself to them in a way that they can know and understand. And we claim every single soul touched by the coronavirus in this nation and across the world. We release angels into their life right now to bring them into an encounter with Jesus Christ. That the Lord will touch, that the, 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 the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. We thank you, Lord. We claim every soul touched by the coronavirus. Every single one who came in contact with this virus. We claim every soul for the kingdom of God. We claim every person for the kingdom of God. We claim every life for the kingdom of God. We claim every one. We decree that at the day when they are stand, they open their eyes before the judgment seat of Christ. They will be in the kingdom of the living God. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You said, if I ask, 
and believe. I believe God can do that. I believe that every person touched by this virus, we claim their soul for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in Jesus name. We claim them. Salvation and glory has come unto their house. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You said in your word, more promises. Oh, God's word. There are so many promises, you guys, of healing. There are so many promises of freedom. There are so many promises that he has given us. And we do not have to succumb to this lying demon of a virus. We don't have to give in to this evil spirit. We bind the spirit. It's a spirit. It's a demon. And in Jesus' name, according to the scriptures, he has given us all authority. Jesus says that he has given us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So we take our authority. We exercise our authority because Jesus tasted death. He experienced death for us. He destroyed the devil who had the power of death. He has delivered us from the fear of death and from all bondage that comes as a result of the, of death. He says, praise we praise you God that whosoever will let him come and take of the water of life beloved I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers we thank you father for you sent your word and healed them you sent your word and healed us you sent your word and Lord you said now, that, so that's if anybody wants these scriptures, this is actually not this 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 particular set of decrees. If you want it, it comes from it's God's will to heal, and it's just a list of of of, of over a hundred and one scriptures. Um, Keith Moore of More Life Ministries publishes this. If you'll go and go online, go to God's Will, just Google God's Will to Heal Keith Moore. It's going to pull up 101 scriptures. I exhort you, get these scriptures, print them out, and start reading through them every day. You don't have to read all 101 every day. Just start reading, you know, read through 10 a day or read through, you know, 20 a day. But just begin to decree them. But don't just read them as you take, you look at each scripture get your bible go to that place in the scripture and read it in context read every passage over and over why because the word of god is life it is alive it is powerful it is sharper than any two-edged sword it divides it has a it will draw a line between the soul and the spirit it will bring healing to you it will bring a cure to your life it will shore you up according to your faith and then you will find that when stuff happens you don't have to be tripped and freaking out and you will be one of the ones who will walk into a hospital this is happening around the world you will be one of the ones who walks into the hospital and walks down the aisle and as you're walking down that hallway people all the people in that hallway get up raised up well that's happening and it's going to happen more and more why because the people who know their god shall do exploits i choose to know my god I choose. How do you get to know him? The first way you get to know him is through his word. The first way you get to know God is through this word. The first way you come and count, you encounter God is with this word. This is the first way. You get this word and you get in here and you find those scriptures. You print this list out and you find those scriptures and you read them. And then as you're reading them, you, the Lord will prompt you. The Holy Spirit will prompt you to pray over them. You'll start to pray. You'll get one of those scriptures and it'll come alive to you. And then you'll begin to pray over it. And the next thing you know, you'll be going and walking into a building one day and you'll encounter somebody and the Lord will bring that scripture. You'll pray over that person and that scripture will bring healing because of the word you deposited in your heart. That's how it happens. That's how it happens. Because we are God's army in the earth. You know, the Lord said something to me a few days ago. Well, actually months ago, but it wasn't until three days ago that I was bold enough to say it. The Lord has been saying to me this whole Kyle becoming Kyle thing. The word Kyle means warrior. And so the Lord has been saying to me for months and months and months. He says, I am sending you to activate an army. I'm like, activate an army. You know, I had the Gideon spirit. I'm like, Lord, I'm just, I'm, look, I'm just a, I'm just a 50 something year old chick trying to fight for her house and keep the roof over her head. That's, you know. I'm standing on these promises because I'm trying to hold my own crap together. 
And God said, he says, just like Gideon was in that wine press threshing wheat, I was in my house praying, standing on the word, believing God, contending for my home, fighting court battles, you know, going to a job every day that I hated, hated that job, hated it, hated it, hated it. And God spoke to me and he says, yeah. And just like I called, I, I went and said, you great and mighty man of God. He says, I'm saying the same to you, chick. I'm saying the same to you, you 57 year old lady. Yes, I'm sending you to activate an army an army of marketplace warriors, an army of warriors who are not afraid to bow up and show up, who are not afraid to, yeah, you're going to get out there, you step out there, yeah, you may take some hits, but that's okay because between me and the enemy that's attacking me is a bloodline and Jesus himself will stand. He has already fought. He's already defeated the enemy. And you know, he didn't just call me. He's calling you. He's asking you to bow up and show up and take your authority and be who he's called you to be. If you don't know how to do that, we got resources to help you. That's what the whole book, that whole book that I just wrote, Becoming Kyle, is all about. It's stepping into the warrior anointing. It's stepping into that anointing so you can take authority over the enemy and boldly say with courage and confidence, stand on that word and see the salvation of your God. Yes, you, you, Felicia, you, Viola, you, 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 Talisa, you, James, you, Marion, you, Julie, you, Star. He's called all of us to show up. Catherine, Michelle, we have to show up. We've got to take our position and show up. So if you don't have that resource, I, I encourage you, go online. You can, or If you want the small version, the little book, you can get that from Amazon.com if you just want to read the book. But if you want the workbook so that you can engage with the content, go to my website, StellaPayton.com, order you a copy. You'll see it. Becoming Kaiyo Workbook Edition. In that book, we talk about what the progression that you go through, the process that you go through so that you can become a powerful force in the earth. In the earth, in your life, in your community, in your marketplace. Because God doesn't need, he, Jesus doesn't need to come back from a bride that's broke, busted, disgusted, pitiful, weak, and scared, and fearful, running home afraid to go and do what you need to do because the coronavirus is out the lord is not giving us a spirit of fear now don't get me wrong i'm not telling you to do unwise things but i'm telling you that whatever the lord tells you to do you do that if there is an instruction the lord has given you to take you take it if there's a command that he's given you to do do it do what the king of kings and the lord of lords tells you to do do it and don't be fearful. Do not be afraid. For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. He says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not in dismay. I am your God. Yes, I will comfort you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. We don't have to be afraid. The Lord God is a sun and a shield. He gives grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from you for you walk upright. There. What do you need? You need courage. He's not going to hold courage back from you. You need courage. We need courage. We need boldness. We need confidence. We need to know that we know that we know that when we go into a setting, whether we go into an environment by accident, but I'm just started to decree, Lord, I thank you that just like John G. Lake, if you haven't seen that post, I'll post it again on my page. But John G. Lake, back in the... In the, in the 1920s, when he when when the disease and I, I believe I don't know if it was cholera, but when the disease would they would put the disease on his body, they would put a living virus on his skin, and he stood on that word so much until when they put that living virus on his skin, then they took a to swab of it a moment later and tested it, and it was dead. The virus died when it came in contact with him, and I said, Lord. That's where we got to get to. That's where we've got to build ourselves up. That's where we have to increase our faith level to. So that regardless of what happens, what comes or what goes, we can stand up and manifest this kingdom. That Jesus didn't die so that you could go to heaven. Jesus died so that you could bring heaven to earth. He didn't die so that we could go to heaven and be, and be running. He died so that we could bring heaven to earth and manifest heaven on earth. That's why he died. 
He gave you and I permission to take his name, to take his blood, to use his authority. And he says, the works that I do, greater works are you going to do. So when are you going to do something? It may just be being bold enough to get on here and say what God's been telling you to say. That's, that's, that's all I got today. I love you guys. Well, thank you all so much for being on here with me. Again, if you want the list of prayer decrees that came from More Life Ministries, you can, if you Google God's Will to Heal, Keith Moore, K-E-I-T-H-M-O-O-R-E, you can download a copy for your house. Pray them every day. Get that word into your heart. Get that word into your spirit. And God will use you to change someone else's life. If you want more information, on Becoming Kyle, our new book. We had just finished a powerful class last night. It was so, so good. We're getting to 100K. It's not about just making money. It's about acquiring enough financial resource so that God can use you to change the circumstance that other people are living under. God wants to bless the nations. He wants to bless the world. He wants to bless your community and he wants to do it through you. That's it. That's what it's about. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're here to change culture for the better by releasing the kingdom in the earth. We are not just dying and going to heaven. We are bringing heaven to earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Just like the will of God is manifested in heaven, healing is in health, heaven, health is in heaven, prosperity is in heaven, joy is in heaven, goodness is in heaven, peace is in heaven. We manifest all of that. We bring it down here and we release it. And we are transforming this earth with the kingdom of God by releasing heaven on earth. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I love you, love you, love you. And until next time, you make it a terrific day. Bye-bye.